Hi, in this video demo, I'm going to work with PHP in order to create a sticky validation form. So it's going to start out with just two fields so that you can get a basic idea of how to set this up and get it working. We're going to have one for name and one for email. And you can see right away that when I test it, this is a sample of the finished working version, by the way. So when we tap the button to submit, we're going to build in the validation in here to check and make sure that the name and email address have been entered. And making it sticky is where we come in here and we type something in and we click it again. And rather than making the form information disappear here, we're keeping the value in that the user initially typed in. Now we're doing basic validation here. We're not getting into the part about checking to make sure that it's actually in the format of an email address. In this example, we're just looking to make sure something has been filled in for both name and email. So if I delete this and I come back in and put something in for name and sign up, then you can see that the message goes away and it comes back for email address. And then when we finally have something in here for both, then we get the confirmation page. So I'm going to demonstrate how to do this from a sample file that you'll be able to download from the instructions in the description. So I'm going to start back with that page. It's called stickydemo.php. You can download it. I'm just going to go over what we have to start out with and we're going to build on from here in order to get the form to work. So first of all, I've got a basic form and if I scroll down here, we've got the form tags for name and for email and then the submit button. So I'm going to bring up a version of what this looks like to begin with. So here's what our form looks like when it's loaded and we just go to it in the browser. So the form part is down here being displayed, but we also have the error messages showing up right away when we go to the page. So let's take a look at the code a little more closely. Here's our form and the form is inside HTML, not within the PHP part of our script. Remember that our PHP code is embedded inside these tags, so outside of it, it's working like regular HTML. So what's happening here is our code starts inside the PHP tag, and we get the variables from the form, and if they're empty, then we put out a message that says, please enter your first name, please enter your email address. And then if they are filled in, then thanks for signing up and displaying out the information that they submitted. So since there's no logic structure in here yet to say, well, if the form has been submitted, then do this. And if it hasn't been submitted, then display the form. So let's work on that part of it first. And to do that, we're going to break this out into different functions. So to begin with, let's create a basic logic structure of what should happen if the form's been submitted or not. So to begin that if structure, I'm just gonna paste this in. It says if the server request method is equal to post. So the first thing we're doing is we're checking to make sure that when the form information is submitted, it's using the post method. And then this is the opening curly brace of what should happen if that is true. So I'm going to move the rest of this piece down a little bit. So we're going to put this into a function in a second. So if the information has been submitted using post, then what do we want it to do? Let's create a function to say we're going to check it or validate it. So I'm gonna call my function validate stuff and open close parentheses with a semicolon. So we're gonna make that validate stuff 
function happen first. And so I'm going to turn this, this has already been set up pretty much to do the validation. So we've got a good chunk of it already in place. So I called it validate stuff. So I'm going to say function validate stuff. And then everything that should happen with that function goes inside an opening and closing set of curly braces. So I've already got the curly braces in here for my if sections, but I need a closing curly brace for the function. And I like to put in a comment to say that this is the end of whatever the function is, because it can get a little tricky when you have a lot of opening and closing curly braces to keep track of where stuff is opening and closing. I'm also going to take this code and I'm going to move it over to the left a little bit. Okay, just to make it so it's not so far out there. So if post, if stuff is coming through, the request method was post, we wanted to validate stuff. So I'm going to save this and upload it to my server and then we can test it just to see what happens when we set it up just to do that piece. Now remember what was happening was this was automatically going in here and doing our validation and we don't want it to do that until after the user has submitted something. So let me take a second and upload this to my server and then we'll come back and refresh this. Okay, so I've loaded it up to my server, so now I'm going to refresh my page. Okay, that's good. Now the error messages are not displaying, so it's waiting until after this has been submitted. So if I go ahead and hit don't fill any of this in and I hit the submit button. Right now we get our error messages, but now the problem is it's showing the form again. We don't want to have to show the form again down in here. So we can fix that by setting this logic structure up here. Well, if submit's been clicked, validate it. And if it hasn't, let's tell it to do a different function. So let's say else, and we'll create another function. Let's just call it something like show form. And again, most of our stuff is already set up in here for our form. We just need to move this into the PHP. So let's create the function here called show form. And I'm going to move, I'm going to get rid of this comment since this is an HTML comment, and move this into my show form function. So now I'm starting to get errors here and that's because I'm trying to put HTML inside PHP. Now I could go in and do print statements for all of these, but a quick way of putting in a big block of HTML is to use a print here or a, what's called a here doc. So we can say print three less than symbols and then a marker. I'm just going to call my marker form. And at the end of my HTML, I'm going to put in the name of the marker again with a semicolon. Now one thing again to watch out for when you use a, a here doc is to not have any spaces in front of this. If this automatically tabbed over, you can see that my color coding in my IDE automatically changes because it doesn't recognize it. So there can't be any spaces before this ending marker and it has to match it exactly with the case and the spelling. So we've set up the logic here so that if stuff is coming through that's being posted, do validate stuff, which does some basic checking. Otherwise, show the form. So let me save this and I'm going to upload it to the server and then we can check it again. All right, so I'm going to refresh this page. Actually, let me just go back and reload it in. Okay, so it's, it's showing the form and it's not showing any of our validation errors yet. And if I hit sign up, now this time we see just the errors without the form. Now if I go back and I fill in something for name and hit sign up, we just get the one for email address. If I hit back 
and put in something just for email and sign up. I get the other one. And if I go back and put in both, then we get the confirmation. So that's working pretty well. We have one PHP file now that is displaying the form and validating the information. But it is kind of hacky to make the user use the back button to go back and forth when filling this out. So, you know, when we had this and we had sign up, they had to hit back in order to go back and see, you know, what their what they had submitted. We want to display the form again with an error message next to it and we want to populate in any information that they would have previously entered into the form. So we still have some more things to fill in here to make it a true sticky form. So let's move back to the source code and see what we can do in order to make this sticky and to show the error messages right next to our text box. So first let's look at getting the error message to display next to the text box. So if we look at the validation, if there's a problem, we're printing this message out and rather than just display it right here, why don't we create a variable that we can use and pass into our form to display within the form. So our, our idea is we want to get this string into this show form function so we can display the error message. So instead of using print, let's create a new variable. Let's call this uh, like name error and set that equal to this string. And we'll do the same thing for email. We'll create a new variable called email error and set that equal to the email address message. So now how do we get this into the show form function? Well, we have, if this is empty, then we have the error message. And if this is empty, we have the error message. And then we need a piece of logic in here that says, well, if this is empty or this is empty, then we want to pass this information into the show form function. So let's add in another if statement. So then if we'll say exclamation point, which means not, if not name and email, then we have to put in what do we want to have happen? So if there's no name, right? If name is null, I just noticed this should be name, not first name and email. So if name and email are empty, then we want to show the form again. So we're going to do the show form function. So let's just see if that piece works. We haven't done anything to actually pass in the error messages, but let's just see if we don't fill something in, if it keeps showing the form. So we'll do this in, in little steps here. So I'm going to upload this to the server and open up the browser and we'll refresh it and test it again. Okay, so now I'm not going to put anything in here and keep hitting this and it is displaying the form again. So it does kind of look like it's not working, but it is doing what we set it up to do. So that if there was an error, it's going to keep doing the show, show form function. Now we need to get the error messages into show form. So what we do is, I'm just going to copy this, we're going to pass this in as an argument. So we're going to pass in name error and we're going to pass in email error. And when they get passed in, right, the, this is telling it the variable that's coming in. We could give it a different name here, but I'm just going to keep the same name because I just think it's a little easier in this case to keep the same variable name. So let's put in next to here. This is for the name. So we're going to just print out name error. And for email, we're going to print out email error. So we're getting these passed in here. So let me save this and I'm going to upload it to the server again. We'll bring it back up in the browser and we'll reload this in. 
and now we've got some error messages here it says missing argument one for show form and it's called on line 14 so they're both right in the same place argument one argument two on line 14 so let's look at what line 14 is so line 14 okay now here at the beginning we said if it's if post was submitted validate otherwise show form whenever we're calling the show form function or any other function that you build the variables right the arguments that are in here have to match up it has to be passing in two things so I'm just gonna copy this and paste it in and let me save that upload it to the server and see if that makes it any happier so we'll do that come back here I'm gonna reload the page okay now while we're looking at that though when the page is first being submitted here it doesn't know what name error is or email error so it's probably good form that we at least initialize those variables up here to empty strings so I'm just going to put in I'm just gonna paste this in for time purposes but I'm just gonna say name error is an empty string email error is an empty string just so that if something has been submitted here and we're doing show form for the first time at least it knows it's an empty string the first time okay so our form got this far and if we tap the submit button right then we have our error message please enter your first name please enter your email address so our message is showing up here right within our form so if I type in something here for first name and sign up then that message disappears and if I type in something for email but not first name then this one disappears and this one appears right so if we fill in something for both and sign up then we get our confirmation so now the next thing we need to do is to make it sticky right if I reload the form again and you typed in something here for your name and you hit sign up it shows the error message that the email address was missing but the content of what was in here goes away so the same thing happens if I type in something for email address and sign up the message here goes away it shows here but it's clearing out the information so we want to make this is the sticky part this is where it's we want it to save what the user had originally entered so they don't have to fill it in all over again and this isn't too bad we're already getting the name and the email here as variables and we need to populate this information in our show form function so if we come back in here and we specify value equals and let's just say name right because that would be the variable for name and email would be the same the only difference is this is email so if we save this and I'm gonna upload it to the server let's test it and see if this will fill in the information for the name so let me come in refresh the page and I'll put in something for first name and sign up and it disappears something in here for email sign up and it disappears so that's not working so what's happening is right in here it doesn't know what name is we're not getting any errors it just doesn't know what name is so it's not putting anything in here for name and email so even though the variables are created basically the variables are created in in here invalidate stuff so in order to get it from here we could pass it into our show form function so let's try that let's pass in name and email and again since these all have to match here when we're saying show form we also wanted to pass in name and email and up here it needs to match when we're calling that function to pass in name and email so again let me save all this upload it to the server and then we'll refresh the form again 
So now I'll put in some stuff, sign up. Now it's in there. If I put in stuff in here and I delete this and submit it, then this information stays in and is sticky. And if I put in something for both, then sign up and we have our confirmation. So a basic working example of doing some validation, just in this case, just to see if something is filled in. We're not doing a specific one to make sure that the email address is an actual email address or in the right format. That's a whole nother video, demo at another time. But hopefully you've got a better idea of how to pass things into functions and make a sticky validation form.